Something has to be done about this. All that raw emotion is turning into action. Colton Bushke's family and supporters are heading to Ottawa to meet with federal politicians. We're not going to go there for pretty, for, for handshakes. Chief Kim Jonathan says they're going there to demand more Indigenous representation in the justice system. They want a fresh start to the conversation on reconciliation. What we don't need is for people just to feel sorry for us. We don't need people to feel sorry and, and just pity and then leave it there. The best way would just be to educate people. Michael Stewart lives in the same rural area as Gerald Stanley. The man found not guilty of murdering Colton Bushy. Stanley says his gun accidentally went off when Bushy and his friends drove onto his farm in August 2016. His defense lawyer argued Stanley felt threatened because he thought the group was stealing. Stewart says he's conflicted about Stanley's acquittal. I know a man should be able to protect his family, but where do we draw that line? Indigenous lawyer Eleanor Sunchild says she believes this case can become a catalyst for change. I think that one of the things that will come out of this trial and this death is a, a, a taking a really good look at our relationships between our two people. After the verdict, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau seemed to suggest which side he's on. Far too many times. That has riled Conservatives in Ottawa who are taking to social media to accuse Trudeau and other cabinet ministers of political interference in the justice system. Many of them suggesting it's wholly inappropriate for elected officials to publicly undermine findings of a lawfully delivered verdict. With the Liberals seemingly receptive to Bushi's family, that adds one more debate stirred up by this case. Olivia Stepanovich, CBC News, Saskatoon. We will never know why those 12 jurors decided to acquit Gerald Stanley. In Canada, jurors have a legal obligation to keep their deliberations secret from the judge, from the prosecutor, and certainly from the public. But in such a racially charged case, the fact that jury appeared to be all white is a flashpoint for controversy. Some legal experts say no matter the facts, the jury selection process taints the verdict. Had Indigenous people been on the jury, there'd be more legitimacy to the verdict. Right now, with no Indigenous people on the jury, and in fact, Indigenous people being excluded, deliberately excluded from the jury, Indigenous people and actually everyone has a right to be skeptical of the decision that was made. So why do courts in Canada sometimes struggle to get more diversity on juries? One of the issues is peremptory challenges. Lawyers on both sides can exclude potential jurors for any reason. They don't have to explain why. And some experts argue that leaves the process open to stereotyping and biased assumptions. There have been calls to do away with these challenges for decades. Back in 1991, Manitoba held an inquiry into Aboriginal they justice in part because of the handling of the Helen Betty Osborne case. She was a young Cree woman who was kidnapped and murdered. The accused went before an all-white jury panel. The inquiry called for abolishing preemptory challenges, saying both the Crown and Defence Council have too many opportunities to make decisions on the basis of racist or sexist stereotypes. And again, in 2013, during a review of Ontario's jury system, former Supreme Court Justice Frank Iacobucci recommended exploring an amendment to the criminal code that would prevent the use of preemptory challenges to discriminate against First Nations people serving on juries. Now, any decision to change peremptory challenges is up to the federal government. The Justice Minister, Jody Wilson-Raybould, has said that she finds the underrepresentation of Indigenous people on juries concerning, but any changes would require additional study.